Wellness Mart. Awesome start. All right, so right now I am on the ground in the town of Carpina, and uh, we've been busy uh, with different events. I've taught a class already, it went amazing. There was about 40 people there, um, including uh, some ladies from uh, in the town that uh, wanted to come and just have something to do, so they brought a bus to come hear me speak. After two and a half hours of teaching, uh, the biggest feedback I had was, oh, I wish we had some time for hands-on. Do we have some time for hands-on? So imagine listening to me, like you hear me for like five to 10 minutes every week. Imagine two and a half hours and then still wanting more. So that was uh, very encouraging. Needless to say though, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging this week. I wanted to make sure I'm still sharing content on the channel. Um, so I thought one of the cool things could be, what does it look like to frame out a talking head um, when you have next to no gear? So this week we're playing with my smartphone, uh, iPhone 14 Pro. Um, I'm just using the stock app, uh, using cinematic mode because I'm filming mostly outside and it works beautifully outside. Um, but then I've also got my audio and a tripod. My lighting is 100% um, a light. Uh, I think you guys actually have it too, unless you're in Alaska in like the winter. Uh, it's called The Sun. We're gonna be using completely natural lighting to figure out how do you frame it out to make something look good when you don't have all the toys, all the gear. Because um, as I say so many times at the end of every video, it's not about the gear, it's about the story. You just need to figure out how to work within your limitations. So just talk a little bit about the framing I've got right now. Um, I am filming on a balcony at our hotel um, and uh, there's a town behind me. This shot would not normally work if it was a full bright sunny day. Uh, we are in the midst of rainy season here in Brazil. And so you can see at any second now, it's gonna start raining again, most likely, or the full sun could come out again. It's been drifting in and out. It's, there's a lot going on with the lighting. This type of shot, if it weren't cloudy right now, wouldn't work out because you'd be filming me. I'm under a rooftop right now, so I'm shaded. But behind me, you would have full sun, a bright, bright, bright sky that would just get blown out. A lot of these buildings might get blown out. Some of the darker roofs might not, but the, the brighter spots, and it just would not be a good shot. And so you have to figure out, like, is this a shot you can do on a sunny day? I mean, you can take a look at it. You might actually still be able to pull it off, but most likely, you're gonna have to reframe. The great thing about a, a cloudy day is though that the sun is being diffused by the clouds and so you can go pretty much anywhere um, because that gives you a nice smooth lighting, a nice soft lighting no matter where you go. Uh, the downside is it's not necessarily the most dynamic lighting because it's basically just a flat light being filled everywhere, but depending on where you position yourself, you can make it a little more dynamic. Right now the sun is, I can feel it, coming a little bit off of that angle through the clouds. Um, so it is giving me a little more sh shade on this side because it's coming from this side. But needless to say, um, it's still flatter and not as ideal and perfect as I would do if I were lighting this with my own lights. So with that being said, let's look at a couple different setups uh, that you guys can use using nothing more than the gear we talked about. When I was talking about lighting working pretty much anywhere because of the sun, you might notice I'm going all around and lighting's changing a little bit of my face but uh, it's staying pretty consistent, even though I'm in a darker environment filming into brighter spots. So it doesn't really matter where I go. It's cloud cover everywhere. And so I got a whole bunch of places I can go. So when you're setting up your shot, the first thing you gotta consider is your framing. Uh, obviously your framing's gotta work with your lighting, but you gotta make sure you can frame a shot out in the first place. Uh, so there's a couple things I like to think about when I'm filming a talking head shot. Uh, the first is, just how much headroom I've got. Um, I try not to have too much headroom. The headroom is the space between the top of your head and the outside of the frame. I try not to have too much um, to where it's this massive gap to where it's like Meh, and just so much space. But then I also try to make sure there's not too little to where my head's being cut off a little bit. The other thing I like to consider is how I have my talent framed. I'm always a fan of about mid, mid waist ish to mid chest, somewhere in that vicinity for my talking head shots. It's not too close that it feels like it's overwhelming, but it's not so far away that the person feels small and insignificant. So there's a little bit of wiggle room in there and it's really just gonna be what's gonna look best for your shot and your framing and all of that. Um, but it's a good rule of thumb. For instance, this feels a little too tight to me. But on top of there being too much headroom, this feels a lot a bit wide to me. I feel like I'm not very significant in my frame. I'm not really the focus of it. Um, but as the one who's delivering the information, you want me to be a little more prominent. So just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, this is about right. 
The other thing to consider is trying to make sure you film in an area where you can control the audio levels. Right now, I'm slightly breaking that rule because I'm filming outside on a patio in Brazil in the middle of the day. So there's a lot going on. There was a bell a couple of moments ago that may or may not have come through. There's some music playing very quietly in the distance. I've heard some dogs, I've heard some yelling. That being said, sometimes if the environment calls for it, it's gonna make sense that you're gonna hear some of the ambient sound. I'm outside. So obviously you're going to hear some of the background sound. You just wanna make sure it's not too prominent, too loud, too overwhelming for whatever your main audio is. That's part of the reason why having a dedicated microphone is important because my camera is pulling the audio from here, so everything happening out there is secondary to the primary audio because there's not a lot of space between the microphone and my mouth. The other thing to consider is how echoey is the environment. Now, the space I'm in right now, there is a little bit of an echo, um, but honestly, I found a lot of places around here have an echo because there are a lot of harder surfaces, flatter surfaces, so it's going to naturally come unless I walk out into the middle of the street but then there's cars, there's people, there's dogs, there's so many other sounds that I'm finding. So you gotta figure out which is going to be the better environment. I determined that the uh, level of echo in here and the level of reverb is low enough that it should work out nicely. The other thing to consider is your lighting. Uh, you just consider basic lighting, which is you wanna have your key, which is your main light, about 45 degrees to your talent's face. But then you might want a little bit of a fill, like if there's a black wall here and this is all darkness, I would wanna find a way to bounce a little bit of light because the fill literally does what it sounds like. It fills in that other side of the face. All right, for our first setup, we're gonna use this patio space. Um, it's a great covered space um, with a nice overlook. I was just in that corner filming my other piece. But um, if you were filming here on a bright sunny day, like I talked about, you wouldn't wanna point out towards there because that would be all blown out and I would be all shaded. So right now my lighting source is about 45 degrees that direction um, to my face, which means that on this side, because there's no light coming in from this side, other than what's bouncing off some of those walls, which are a little bit yellow, so it's bouncing a little bit of a yellow look, that is acting as my fill light. So it gives me a nice definition to where you've got a, your brighter side of the face, your key light side, and then you've got a little bit darker of a side of the face, which is my fill, which the nice thing is since there's not another light source coming from over here, this equivalent to this one, it gives me some nice definition on the face. I've got leading lines, which are right here and right here, that are pointing towards the center of the frame, which guides the viewer's attention towards me. So this is one of the shots of the patio, and I love it because it shows a little bit of the background, and, but like I said, in the ad nauseum now, that if it was a bright, sunny day, if there was full sun, which this is Brazil, it gets bright here. If this was full sun, this would not work because that would be so blown out, you wouldn't be able to see any detail. So that begs the question, how could I film on this patio if it was a full sunny day? All right, so here's setup number two. And this is the setup I would use on a full sunny day. Uh, it's not quite as dynamic or as interesting as the first one because you've got more patio and less outside and less cityscape. But the thing it's got going for it is it's got decent lighting. Currently, I've got a metal roof above my head, which means I'm shaded from a harsh sun. So if this was a fully sunny day, I wouldn't have a harsh sun hitting me. The second thing is I'm able to keep my key light 45 degrees to, me, to the talent, me, and uh, keep this side of my face nicely lit up. So lighting setup, this works out nicely. Now, I talked earlier about not wanting to shoot a lot of exterior type things, darker to lighter, if um, it's a fully sunny day, but you might notice that over here, I have a little bit of the exterior showing. The reason that that would work is because that section of the exterior is filled up with darker brick and a green tree. There's not a lot of stuff that's gonna catch a really bright, sunny light that's gonna overexpose, because that's the biggest thing you need to worry about is that section being overexposed in comparison to this. Because if this looks good and I'm shooting into a full sun, and that area is all overexposed, this area might look nice, but that's just gonna be a blob of white. But not in this case, because we've got basically green and darkish brown. And those are gonna catch some of the light. They might get a little bit brighter than we'd like, but they're probably not gonna overexpose. Now, obviously, if you set the shot up and you were looking at it and be like, ah, those are a little brighter than I want them to be and they're a little distracting, you might have to reframe that out of it a little bit. But I'm pretty confident that at least the tree would be able to stay, just because um, it's darker, it's green, and it looks great. The other thing I love about this is there's a lot of depth. From where I'm sitting to the background, it's, I don't know how many feet, but a lot of feet, or a lot of meters, depending on where you're at. Um, but the key is that that allows the camera to throw that out of focus. Now, I am filming this in cinematic mode, which kind of cheats and throws things out of focus pretty much no matter what. If I was using any other camera, or if I wasn't using cinematic mode, 
um, and I was using the rear camera, which has a nicer shallow depth of field, uh, with some ND filters so I could have all the right settings, then it would be throwing that all out of focus, it would look nice. It'd give me some, a little bit of bokeh. The phone doesn't give a ton of bokeh, but it gives a little bit of bokeh. Bokeh is really just another word for nicely looking blurred background. Sometimes you'll see those like little blurred out blobs, like circles, um, and people say, oh, that's some nice bokeh. It's just talking about the blurring. It's a fancy film term for it. But you might notice I'm still able to have a nice framing to where it's about mid-chest, mid-gut up. Um, my headroom isn't too much. Um, I don't have too much space around me, but it's not a tight shot. It's uh, It just ends up being a very nice shot. So if I were to film an interview with someone, if I were to film a full-fledged talking headpiece, kind of like I'm doing now, then this would be a great opportunity. And once again, the only gear I'm using is a tripod, a camera, my audio, and uh, this thing called the sun. So just a note, I didn't notice this while I was filming that, but apparently that actually was full sun because the sun is actually out behind me. It's just the clouds are deceiving me because there's clouds in the distance. So what you're looking at right now is a shot. If you're shooting from darkness into full sun brightness, you might notice why this type of shot wouldn't normally work. So while it works with some of the opening content, it's not gonna work right now because we've got full sun right behind us. But then you might notice that if you flip around from exactly just where we were, I just pivoted a little bit. Uh, I'm now using the full sun to light just the side of my face and that green tree I talked about is not overexposed, and it overall looks like a pretty decent shot. Framing could be tweaked a little bit, but in terms of lighting, it looks decent. How do we make this look good? So literally all I did to make this look good was I sat myself in a spot that had some depth. So we got the doorway back there, we got a little bookshelf there, and uh, in order to light it, I went ahead and I opened the blinds ever so slightly, so there's just enough light coming in through that window. Um, if I open them all the way, it's way too bright, it was overwhelming for the room, but by leaving it open just a little bit, it gives a little bit of a nice fill over here, a little bit of, or a nice key over here, with just a little bit of fill over here, uh, bouncing off that wall, and, uh, and then I just made sure to slightly tidy up the bookshelves, probably could do a slightly better job of that, uh, but you get the idea. Like it's. Not the best shot, it's not gonna win any awards, it's probably the worst shot in this video, but considering all I have is a hotel room with pretty much nothing on a bookshelf, it's pretty cramped in here, there's a luggage in here, two beds, like there's not a lot of space to work with, I was still able to get a decent talking head shot. Gotta walk to the next spot. Three flights of stairs. Get my workout in. With that being said, these stairs are a pretty cool environment and I can see a cool shot here, but uh, that's not part of today's curriculum. All right, so I'm not gonna do a full setup in here, but you can see visually, you probably could get a pretty nice shot in here. There's a window right here, the lighting is pretty decent, but the echo and the reverb is way too much. And so nada, no good. So consider your audio when you're setting up. All right, so here's our last setup. And this is literally in the middle of a parking lot. Uh, there is a tree right here next to me, um, and there's a car right over there. So you might not think like, hey, that'd be a great spot to get a shot, but it's secluded from the road, so it's pretty quiet. It's, uh, it's somewhat in the back. Um, it's got some decently de interesting elements between that bush there, the, the, the wall's really nice. They've got some nice gardening there. Um, the yellow lines, hit or miss. But in general, like, meh, sure, not a bad shot. Lighting wise, the sun is still back over here. You can see based on the light on my arm, uh, the light is still, the sun's still over here and it's coming through and coming through slightly diffused. Um, but it's, you know, giving me a nice key light on this side. And the tree is blocking any bounce. And so I'm getting a nice uh, darker fill. It's actually acting as what's called neg fill, negative fill, which means it's pulling light away on this side of my face. And so, you know, is it gonna win a award for the best frame shot ever? Probably not, but it's gonna get the job done. It's gonna look all right. Honestly, the biggest thing I think I'm fighting in this area is the wind in this little courtyard is kind of swirling around. Um, so what I probably should have done, just to be safe, I think I'm gonna be okay, but I probably should have put the wind sock on top of my mic just to protect against stronger winds like what you're seeing or possibly hearing right now. It wasn't this windy until I got down here. So here's the key, don't overthink your shot. Ultimately, you just need to work within the constraints of the fact that your, your camera is going to hide things that are off camera. The viewer doesn't know what's off camera. If I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't know there's a car parked right there. You might be able to tell I'm in a parking lot because of the yellow lines, but you're not gonna know there's a car there and that I'm kind of nestled in a corner to where, you know, the lighting just happens to be working nicely and 
Um, it's not like a beautiful set. Like if someone walked in on me right now, they'd think I look crazy because I'm standing in a parking lot talking to my phone. But the shot on the camera looks decent. It's not gonna win any awards, but it gets the job done. And your viewer is gonna be able to focus on your story and what you're delivering to them, the information that you're delivering. So don't overthink it. This is why I tag every video the way I do. It's not about the gear, it's about the story. Because you're ultimately, when filming on a smartphone, working within the constraints of your phone. It's not a matter of having the best gear. It's a matter of working with what you have, knowing what strengths and weaknesses your camera has. And that's for any camera. And then working within those constraints so that you can focus on telling your story and not worry about trying to get the most dynamic, amazing shots. That's all I got this week. But like I in every video, and like I just said a minute ago, remember, it's not about the gear. It's about the story. There's a weird American wandering around talking to his own, thinks he's an influencer.